uh, in the upper right hand corner and that will indicate to me on my end that you're hearing me uh, loud and clear. So I see Nina's hand, good afternoon to you and Matt, Manish, James, Curtis, uh, it looks like we've got Eva on here, Rose, uh, Paresh, good to have you. Let's see who else we I uh, thought I saw someone here earlier. Uh, we've got some other folks that are still coming in here this afternoon. Again, thank you for uh, joining us this afternoon. Uh, like I said, we're going to talk about the, the most effective marketing methods uh, when starting a medical billing business. But first, before we get into that, let me explain to you who we are here at American Business System, what we do, and really kind of how long we've been around. We've been around uh, uh, 19 years. Next year will be our 20th year in business helping folks just like yourself, as you see here on the screen, uh, build a family business, a friendship, partnership type business, working from home, working from an office building, uh, whatever you so choose, however you want to do that, by utilizing our iClaim platform. It's an online, uh, 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 online web-based type of medical billing platform, and we'll certainly get into that a lot more today because we'll, we'll show you how to use that as part of your marketing technique. If you have not already been out to our website, here is our website address. It's uh, www.absystems.com. There you'll find a lot of information there. More importantly, if you want to go even deeper, there also there's a good amount of information about American business systems and about the business package and income potential. These orange buttons here will help you get into what's called our virtual brochure. And in the virtual brochure, many of you have been sent a link already just showing you our welcome page here. But to go deeper here, just request from uh, the, the sales rep that is that's emailed you and welcome you at least in the virtual brochure so you can look at the opportunity, how we help you get clients, the training, the support, the technology, and then finally the final steps of everything and what you need to do uh, to actually become a, uh, an ABS licensee. We're also asked on many occasions about uh, the Better Business Bureau. And folks, we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau here in Fort Worth, Texas. And for those that would love to come by and visit with us, we'd love to have you come by. Uh, our, our address, physical address, is 5751 Kroger Drive uh, here in Keller, Texas, which is just this little suburb north of Fort Worth. Uh, if you're flying in, you would probably fly into the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport and then just take a little drive over here to the Fort Worth area and our building just north of there. And again, we would love to have you come by and visit with us. Our next training date will be from this coming Monday only five weeks away. Normally we schedule them about six weeks apart, but because that six week would end up on the July 4th week, uh, we have decided to kick it up one week uh, ahead of time, beginning the June 24th through the 28th. So that's a Monday through Friday. Uh, we've got a full class uh, right now. Like I mentioned, we're certainly right in the middle of our of our uh, class going on right now, as I understand it from Patrick, and he's actually on site there, so we'll hear from him in just a moment, and he can tell us a little bit how the training's going there, but it's an excellent class, a full class, and we expect the June class just to be as, just as full. So if you're thinking about getting there, please get with us. We'd love to help you with your paperwork and get all that taken care of with you. Let me introduce you to our uh, CEO and founder of American Business Systems, and uh, like I might like to say, is a personal friend of mine uh, for now six years. Uh, Patrick Phillips is uh, not only just a great motivational speaker, he's a great uh, person to, to be associated with. If you're learning to wanting to become an entrepreneur, uh, he would tell you firsthand that he's done all the entrepreneurs the, the wrong way, but we finally found out how to do it the right way for the last 20 years. So he wrote a book, How to Reprogram Yourself for Success. He's also co-authored a book here called Wake Up, Live the Life You Love, and then The Cash Crunch to Cash Flow, which is part of the marketing techniques of what we'll be sharing with you today. So let me bring Patrick Phillips on the phone with us. Patrick, it's good to have you there from on location at the, at the live training class. Yes, in fact, I'm having to use my cell phone here uh, from the hotel, but uh, I love the fact that uh, I can work from here and you can work from your office, and uh, it's a virtual office, isn't it? Eric? Absolutely. It is It is so <laughs> great. Well, Patrick, let's uh, talk to them a little bit of, uh, about Zoom. I think you want to uh, mention about some questions here. Let's, let's talk about how we can handle those questions today. 
Yeah, folks, if you want to type in some questions live during the webinar, you're welcome to do that over there on the control panel for the GoToWebinar. It will look something similar to this. Look carefully and you'll find something called questions. If you click on the little arrow next to it, it will open up there so that you'll have a place where you can actually uh, you know, type in your uh, questions to us. And uh, they'll show up here on the screen. We take them as in the order in which they come in. And if they are specifically on uh, the subject you know, that we're talking about here today, marketing uh, for medical billing companies, uh, we will uh, address those as we can. And then towards the end, if there's some questions left that are generic questions, we'll be glad to answer those as well. So even though this normally cuts off at F hour, if you have questions beyond that, uh, Eric, I don't know if you've got time today, but I'll be able to stay on there in a little bit uh, past the hour and answer any questions. We'll get as much of those uh, questions answered as we can today. So, Perfect. All right, well, Eric, let's, uh, let's keep going here. Uh, what are the most uh, common marketing methods that are out there? I wanted to start with that because, hey, We've we've tried them all, haven't we? <laughs> uh, you know that's what, and that's the, and, you know as as I'm thinking about this and getting in starting to today's webinar, you know Patrick, I think one level of comfort that people could really come to play in is really our longevity of being around uh, for as long as we have, because we do uh, have done different marketing techniques and we've kind of weeded through them. Wouldn't you say over the past few years? Yeah, and, and there's, you know, there's uh, everybody's heard of most of these uh, things that we're going to show here on the screen. These are the most common ways to market uh, anything. It could be a, a product or service. Uh, uh, just in general, uh, we've gone through just about every one of these, like Eric says, over the years, network and referral marketing, uh, newsletters, direct mail, email marketing, telemarketing. I, I mean, it just goes on and on, guys, because there are so many different ways to market. Now, here's the problem. We we tried some of these and uh, we have <laughs> spent a lot of money and time uh, trying something that just didn't work for this business. It may work for some other business, but not for medical uh, uh, the medical billing business because guys, this is a very unique business if you think about it. Uh, you're dealing with doctors, very smart, educated, professional people. You're dealing with the office managers, again, smart, educated people that are uh, trained to do what they do good. And, and so when you try some of these methods that you see here, uh, you will be wasting your time. I just gave a session here myself to the class on marketing and said, in general, guys, don't try anything that we have not told you works. If you do, you're on your own. You know, you're going right. to be uh, spending time and money on stuff that may or may not work for you. And now, if you run across something new that we don't teach, of course, we're always open to that. And Eric, we've even added some things that we got from our licensees. That's correct. So, uh, and, and I think, you know, in today's world, I think uh, we know that some of the, 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 the direct mail, there's portions of that that works, but we just know that whatever it's going to take for you as a new business owner to build a relationship with an individual, uh, just think about keeping things simple. I think sometimes, Patrick, as long as you and I have been in sales and marketing, sometimes we kind of overthink and we over do things and really is it's kind of like you know how do I gain a friendship with you as an individual and that's really what it comes down to if we can just kind of bring it down to a very simplistic portion of what we're doing here in our marketing right. especially for that's these right. doctors people do business with people that they like like you said that they they know and, and that they trust it's all it's all about trust in today's world because guys there's a lot of scams out there there's a lot of uh, uh, people doing things that are not valid, uh, the only way you want to do business with us, ABS, is because you get to a level uh, of trust with us. And that's why we do these webinars every Wednesday at 3 o'clock. We've done this for a couple of years now at least. And we'll continue doing these because we've learned that people get to know us. They find out that we're for real. They can ask us any question they want on these webinars. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have anything to hide because we have a real business that's very successful for a lot of people. Absolutely. All right, so let's get let's just jump right on in there, Patrick. Let's let's start talking about some of the things that have been successful with some of the other licensees and what's been successful for getting any of the clients. Yeah, well, let me get get people a little peek here of uh, what the training actually looks like because uh, again, this is actually being held right here in the hotel this week, and uh, we are doing uh, exactly what we're teaching you, and, and that is we're teaching in the class exactly what to do. So they snapped a picture of me here earlier. Uh, you'll see that there's another picture here of the two instructors that we fly in. These are uh, these ladies are licensees of ABS. They've been both with us for about 
five years now. And uh, they both run a very successful medical billing business themselves. So we bring them in because we want you to hear from people who are actually doing it out there. So when it comes to marketing, these ladies went through the training uh, that you'll go through five years ago, both of them. They learned how to do what we teach, taught them to do to build their business. They built the business, and now they're passing that uh, knowledge on uh, to other people. So uh, here's, the, here's the main thing that you need to learn, and that is you've got to learn to position yourselves in today's world as the expert. Isn't that right, Eric? People want to do business with people who seem to know what they're talking about, at least seem to know, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, that reminds me of one of those influence principles that yeah, I know you and I like to talk about. And, and you know, part of positioning yourself as the expert is just almost how you just carry yourself. It's not necessary that you know every single code that's out there, because I know a lot of people get kind of scared about medical codes and, and, and this, that, and the other. But... It's really just having the confidence that, number one, you know what you're talking about, and number two, I think more importantly, is the backing that you get from American business systems. That's what's going to help you position yourself as the expert. Exactly. Yeah. We call that third-party credibility, and folks, even though you may not feel like you have the credibility yet because you don't know enough about this business, it doesn't matter. Uh, Here's, a, here's an old saying that I read from Bob Berg. He's a guy that I've been on the platform with uh, public speaking. He's written a book called The Art of Persuasion. And in that book, he says, people will accept your ideas much more readily if you tell them Benjamin Franklin said it first. <laughs> in other words, he's saying use third-party credibility because if Benjamin Franklin said it, everybody knows who he is, then, uh, then it must be true. So we tell our licensees, and we teach them in the class here, you – you should, at first at least, uh, since you don't have the uh, the knowledge to be the expert, you need to point to us. Folks, we're the nation's largest network of independent medical billing companies in the world. Uh, and so we have the experience, the background. We do thousands of claims every day for hundreds of doctors from coast to coast. So that, that will give you the credibility that you need in today's marketplace. Then we point you to using our book uh, that I've uh, written here with a CPA friend of mine called Cash Crunch to Cash Flow. If you look at the subtitle there, it says how to get more money faster into your professional practice or small business and plug the hidden leaks that are draining your profits. Now, folks, in today's world, what could be more pertinent than a topic like this, especially for doctors? Uh, because they're hurting right now, aren't they, Eric? Yes, they they really are, and you know it's it's amazing how uh, they are. I mean, they 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 they're they're under a crunch, and the the cash crunch is the, their main problem. There's no doubt. Yeah, and so we go in and teach you to go in and position yourself as the expert that has the answers. We we make these books available to you. They're fourteen ninety five on Amazon dot com or in the bookstore. But you buy them from us at our printing cost, which I think is about three dollars a piece. Uh, it's a nice 176-page uh, paperback book. Uh, it's uh, not got any contact information for ABS or, or anybody else as, as far as that goes. So we teach you how to mark that book up, uh, put your name in the front of the book as, you know, it's compliments of your company name and some contact information. And then during the class this week, we actually show you how to go through the book, as you see there on the right side, and tab and highlight things in the book that you want the doctor to read. Uh, this makes it very unique when you hand it to the office manager, let's say, and say, would you please pass this on to the doctor? The doctor doesn't have to read the whole book. They can literally uh, flip to some of those tabs there that you mark and, and see the highlighted things. And hopefully that engages them and wants them to, you know, makes them want to read the whole book. But uh, even if it doesn't, the things that are highlighted alone will convince the doctor that they need to at least think about outsourcing their billing to somebody who knows uh, what they're doing. And you, you obviously will you know, seem like you do know, know what you're doing. And you will know if you trained with us. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I want you to kind of pause here on this one screen that you've got here. And I'm going to go jump over to one of the questions. Uh, and Jeff is asking a question, how do you get your first client? And I think this is the, just the start of how all of this is really going to work is this – is really what we're talking about right here, educational marketing. Uh, and let's, let's kind of dive into what we're talking about here when we're talking about educational marketing. 
Yeah, Jeff, uh, that's a great question. Everybody asks that. Of course, if we have the magic answer that you just do this, 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 and this, and you'll get your first client, of course, uh, our licensing fee would be you know $100,000. Uh, but the reason we can't tell you exactly how to do that is because every one of our licensees gets their clients in a different way. Now, from what we're going to teach you today, of course, there is a handful of the most effective ways of getting clients. And, but, it, it, but it's not one thing. It's several things that you try because maybe in one case you're trying one method and it doesn't seem to get you any response. Another method might you know, work and, and, and be a tremendous response for you. So let's talk about that educational marketing just for a second. First of all, guys, we educate the doctor's office and the office managers utilizing some of our printed uh, flyers and brochures and things that we have available because they teach uh, in a roundabout way. They're educating the office manager or the doctor about their need for controlling their cash in their office. See, it's not just the medical billing that brings them in money, but they collect money from the patients as well, of course, and they have problems with collecting from the patients. Uh, they lose money because their coding is wrong. They lose money because they don't know how to collect bad debt. Uh, they don't know how to prepare for audits from uh, you know, Medicare. All of those things are things that affect the cash flow for the doctor's office, and you have uh, answers to all those things. So we uh, provide, of course, a huge amount of these uh, pre-printed with your name and logo on them, uh, professional-looking uh, flyers and brochures, and then we have a whole series of postcards and greeting cards as well. Now, uh, that means that you don't have to do all the work and spend all the money that we spent having these things developed and yet you look like you're a part of something that's much larger than, you know, just you working out of your spare bedroom. I mean, let's face it there, most, most of our licensees do work out of their spare bedroom. They Thank still you. run their business out of their home. Uh, but Absolutely. that doesn't matter in today's world because the, the doctor doesn't come to visit you in your office, of course. You, you go to their offices. So there's, there's what we're talking about. Now, educational marketing, though, is not just uh, educational materials like these. Uh, they have to do with holding what we call lunch and learns. Eric, you want to tell them a little bit about lunch and learns? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, this, is, this is a great opportunity for you to really connect with either a group of office managers or with a group of doctors or at least you know, people that have influences to those doctors. And uh, I think I was even speaking with um, uh, someone the other day uh, that I believe is on, on the webinar today that you know we talked about meeting up with the uh, maybe some hospital groups uh, of the administrators there and say, hey, do you do y'all ever need special guest speakers? Do y'all need someone to come speak? Uh, this gives you that opportunity, and we already have already pre-built uh, PowerPoints and everything else ready to go for you, uh, pretty much scripted out of what you can deliver to them about revenue cycle management or it may be about uh, the Medicare audits that, they're, that some of the doctors may be going through, or uh, you know, if you're pretty savvy of yourself, you can actually create some of your own. And th these lunch and learns don't have to be like a full hour, like what we're doing with a webinar today. I mean, it could certainly just be you know a, a good 15, 20 minute uh, time there. And if, uh, listen, most licensees would would uh, give their their <laughs> whatever they could give to get in front of a doctor for 15, 20 minutes at, at a time. And so when you can yeah, operate, Eric, yeah. We, 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 one of the instructors here uh, this week, in fact, that has been uh, teaching with us now for a couple of years, Bonnie uh, from the Denver area, her last uh, lunch and learn that she had, the way she's figured it out, how to promote it and so forth, uh, had 65 wow. office managers and doctors in that room. Yeah, so it can be a big crowd. It can be a small crowd, like you see here, just a few of the office staff uh, of the, the particular doctor that you're talking to. You get sure. to with them. We'll show you how to provide them a, a real inexpensive lunch. Uh, that's one way to capture their attention, food. And, uh, and it will show you exactly how to present that. We, like Eric said, we've got the PowerPoints uh, and presentation materials already developed for you. So all you have to do is just follow our script, basically. And then if you want to get a little bit bigger than that, you can do what some of our licensees have done, and that is they actually present seminars, uh, like Eric said, at hospitals, for example, and you'll get even bigger crowds at those. So, Certainly. you know, whatever you feel comfortable doing, 
this is just one, remember, of many ways that we teach you how to market. Now, some will appeal to you, some won't. That's okay because we give you enough ways to market that you'll pick out the, the handful of marketing methods that, that work for you the best and that fit your personality, your time, your budget, and so forth, and uh, that's how you get your first client. So this is just one of many. Yep. And now for our, our, our analytical folks that are on the call with us today, they're trying <laughs> right. to figure, I can't, I can't do those seminars. Well, you may be wanting to uh, attack it to an, a way of using the what's called the free practice analysis. Now, we put the word free there because this is a, certainly a service that you can provide. But, uh, Patrick, let's talk a little bit about this practice analysis and what we're talking about here and how, we're, how, how this is educational in and of itself. Well, yeah, because uh, this is about, oh, I don't know, there's probably 30 questions on these, this practice analysis questionnaire that we've come up with that you will sit down with the office manager or the doctor in some cases, and you'll just ask them these questions. These are things that they know because they're, well, if they're doing the billing themselves, they certainly know the answers to all of them. Uh, and if they don't, they can get some of the answers from a current billing company. If they're not happy with them, that may be why we you know, ask you in. And uh, you basically are going through that. That takes about 30 minutes to go through the whole thing. And the nice thing is that you, you don't have anything to sell. You, you're there to see if there's any pain uh, in their revenue cycle, just like the doctor examines you to see if there's any pain. You know how they poke you here and poke you and go, okay, does it hurt here? Does it hurt there? Well, that's what we're doing to the practice. We're finding out if they've got pain. And if they do, then guess what? We have the answer to that. So we take you through that in the class. We give you exercises to go through, figure out how to ask the questions, what answers you can expect from those, and then we teach you how to go back uh, later after you've taken those questions back to your office and prepare what's called a proposal. Now, folks, we've already got those proposals developed. They're templated Word documents that basically you go in and change and fill in, delete and add to whatever you want to to make it yours personally. Then you go back to the doctor's office with that in a nice uh, prepared a uh, proposal uh, folder that we've got designed for you with your business card, and that is what you go over with the doctor to show them in black and white uh, what you can do to uh, help them. So again, the, the practice analysis is a big part of how we market this. You'll notice there's no selling. We're just asking them questions and then coming back with, uh, hopefully, you know, the prepared uh, uh, answers and the the ways to uh, present this to them to where they go, wow, I, where do I sign? <laughs> right. And, and because the numbers here don't lie. And, and so that's what we're talking about, educating. We're educating them on their current condition. And yeah. and so that's, that's one of the w best ways that, you know, a lot of people have found a, a great deal of success of just if you can get in front of them and present to them a uh, – this type of proposal, going through the practice analysis and delivering, you know, a comparison number of what uh, that is comparable to other licensees that are doing very similar uh, billing with other doctors. Yeah, it's what they're spending now versus what you can charge and how much money you can save them. And bottom line is, it either works for them or it doesn't. Now. Eric, out of the thousands of these, I guess, that have been done over the last 20 years by our licensees, I can't think of many licensees that called up and said, you know what, uh, this just didn't work for this particular right. doctor. Uh, it has happened, but it's so rare because it's usually a doctor, maybe he's uh, halfway retired and he's only seeing five patients a day or something. Sometimes that doesn't you know, uh, work for those particular doctors. But guys, this is something that we've developed over the years that has proven to get clients uh, because it does appeal, like Eric said, to the analytical uh, <coughs> doctors that are out there and office managers. Sure. And then we, we start talking about our the warm market, and uh, you know, uh, this could be one of your best areas of marketing and and breaking into getting your first client. And, and and we're not trying to talk about you know go to your warm market to sell them some toothpaste, you know, your your mother and brother and all this. But what you're doing right. is kind of educating them on some of the things that you're you just recently got into and, and found. So, Patrick, you're you're real good about talking about how to uh, deal with people with their warm market here. Yeah, and, and and like Eric said, folks, it's not that you're trying to assume that your friends or relatives or, or contacts know uh, that, that that they are doctors or office managers, but some of them know people who are involved in healthcare. 
And that's the great thing about tapping into your warm market. We teach you exactly how to do that, by the way, uh, by going through a whole process here in the classroom as to what you would say to that person to explain to them what you do for them. For example, we have PowerPoint presentations like you see here that can be put on an iPad if you have one, or they can just be printed out on paper. Uh, it's the exact things that you would say. We actually, in the class, go through an exercise where you're actually presenting this. We don't use iPads, of course. We, we just printed them out and we got them a little flip charts like this one. And we teach you how to go through that step by step and what to say. It takes about, oh, maybe 15 minutes. And uh, what you do at the end, of course, is ask them, do you know of anybody uh, you know, that might be interested in my services? If you do, uh, let me know. And that's all it takes is a warm market contact like that because, guys, there's nothing that builds trust more with somebody who is referred to somebody else. If you were referred uh, or, or had an insurance agent, for example, referred to you by a friend, you would trust that insurance agent because your friend referred them. So that's what this warm market thing is all about. And now we're going through this very quickly here and very uh, we skim over it until you actually go through and see the presentation. You won't realize how big this is. But, guys, this is a huge way, and we have many, many licensees who get their first client by just tapping into and saying the right things to uh, their warm market. And that kind of ties in with our next uh, topic here, doesn't it, Eric? Yeah, business networking. And, and folks, uh, you've got to understand, again, how, how – Getting out there and, and building relationships, whether it's with your your warm market, as Patrick has said, or with new business contacts here uh, in the business world, uh, you certainly want to attend some net business networking groups. Uh, I know that there's the BNI, which some of you may be somewhat familiar with, but but these are happening all the time. And even if you go to one that has two or three people at a net business networking, that's a good thing because you can again develop. But just asking questions, and, and Patrick, I, I, I really like how, you know, really we sort of teach this in class. We're really trying to learn how to be a networker in class, and that is how can I help you find somebody, and then that turns into that whole reciprocity. If I'm helping you, then you should be helping me. So th this is a great way to get plugged into your community and letting people know what you're currently doing, and then with the statistics that we certainly give you, even what, if you missed last week's webinar on the, the Obama portion of what we talked about here, that's the kind of information that you'll be able to talk very, very from an, like that expert position, as Patrick said earlier, in these networking meetings. Yeah, in fact, this is how uh, one of the ladies in our uh, training class here uh, Bonnie, again, has built her business. So she was working a 50 to 60 hour uh, a week job when she became a licensee, came to the training, and through the business networking, she figured out that she could go to these. Some of these, like this one that you see here, is held uh, in a restaurant, uh, and they're, they're breakfasts early in the morning before normal business hours, and some in the evenings, late in the evenings, where they'll just meet and gather for uh, you know, hors and, and drinks. And that is where she built her business uh, is outside the regular business nine to five hours. So we'll show you how to do that. We'll show you exactly where to find those places. There's all kinds of network groups meeting all over your city today that you're probably not aware of. Uh, we'll also show you how to find the, 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 the membership groups and the free groups that are out there, how to find what we call your power partners that can actually help you and connect you like CPAs, for example, uh, bankers, real estate agents, and that kind of thing. And we'll teach you exactly what to say. Sometimes they'll have you stand up, everybody in the room, stand up and you know give a little short 30-second you know, commercial on what to say, and we'll teach you exactly how to do that in such a way that everybody in the room that's interested in what you've got will want to meet you afterwards and meet your business card. There's lots of things that you should not say and do when you're business networking as well, and we'll teach you those things so you don't stumble on that as well. But again, business networking is just one of those many ways uh, that will help you build a business quickly and find uh, clients. I can't tell you how many licensees, Eric, have gotten their first client through just this one thing alone. It sure. just comes up over and over again. But unless you know how to do it the right way, folks, you could, uh, you know, you could mess up with this. You have to have the right things to say when you get up, and of course, when you meet one-on-one -on -one with some of these people, we'll teach you how to do that as well. 
and you know this you know just a little break here it's midpoint here and that's where folks as you're as you're thinking about getting into this business Patrick and I are talking about a lot of one a lot of different types of marketing techniques here and so you know yours yours may be just right there in the in the the, the business networking it may be with the warm market it may be with the practice analysis so again as we're kind of coming along through this there may be two or three that you put together and string together to, to get what you need to get on helping you get the first client. Well, one of the newest things that we've really been, and that's just because of lately all the social media on the net, on the internet now, uh, is where, gosh, uh, some of our uh, licensees are getting clients now just through the internet. Yeah, I mean, social media is just the big thing that's happening out there, guys. I mean, it includes everything, as you see here on the screen, uh, the Facebook and the Flickr and YouTube and the meetup.com and uh, all these things. I don't even know what some of them are. I've never been on the uh, Prince Street, for example, or Dig. But the point is there's lots of stuff happening out on the Internet that you can plug into and connect. Now, we've tested this out, and, again, we know which ones work and which ones don't. There's ways to do it the right way, and there's ways to do it the wrong way, and we're going to go through that step by step with you and teach you exactly how to do that. Uh, one of the things that you'll find that's uh, really interesting in the uh, social media course is uh, utilizing uh, something as simple as a greeting card. Now, everybody loves greeting cards, right? You love when you get one in the mail. It's always uh, about a birthday or an anniversary or some surprise, um, and or a thank you note or something like that. So we actually utilize this social media uh, to help you make it. We already have uh, greeting cards designed, uh, again, professionally designed cards that you can actually send out. Now, the nice thing is that you don't even have to address an envelope or put a stamp on an envelope or find the cards because these are all done through our automated system. We have over 15,000 different cards that you can use uh, and personalize on the inside with your message, your logo, uh, your picture if you want to, and utilize this to connect with the people that you're out networking to. And uh, so this has been incorporated into an online system that then sends the card out in the mail, printed, uh, and, and the people get it you know, right in, in their mail. Uh, so it, you have to see this to believe it, but it's automated, which means you just put the person's name in and automatically that card goes out. And you can even set it up to where it has a campaign and, and uh, contacts them you know, like once a month. We'll also show you how to utilize uh, printed and emailed newsletters to tap into your network that's out there. Uh, very important ways to connect with people. We have templates already designed uh, in the systems that we recommend to you that will actually show you how just to drop in some text here and there and fill in the blank and send those things out. So all of this has to do with just connecting with other human beings, uh, sometimes just you know referred to as social networking, social marketing. And, and uh, a lot of these um, newsletters are, again, that educational piece of getting that information out about what uh, current events. And, Patrick, I think well, you and I were talking earlier in the day. Let's talk a little about how, how these folks get that educational information. Uh, we, let's talk about how what we, you and I do and the support does uh, throughout the month on getting our licensees up to date on a lot of this, edu this information. Yeah, a lot of the st stuff that you'll see us sharing, Eric and I come up with things that we've run across. We'll share that here on these webinars. Well, we do that for our licensees as well, and anything that you see us sharing, you can ask for our support department to send to you. So you will have the, the data or the link to an Internet site where you can then copy and paste the text into your newsletters. Uh, we have a blog, for example. ABS has a blog. You can go to abs.com slash blog and see that uh, we post on that uh, usually two or three things a week uh, that are informational type stuff that you can then use for your newsletters. Uh, so we constantly do webinars for our licensees where we're sharing those kinds of things. There's no end to the stuff that's out there once you know all the different places that we'll point you to to gather that information to put into your newsletters. Correct. Now, Eric, you have uh, You've done some trade shows and conventions recently, haven't you? Yes, we we did. It was a it was a great time to do that. And and folks, you can uh, you can visit all type different types of trade shows and conventions. And when we talk about conventions, they don't even have to be medical conventions, do they, Eric? No. They don't have to be medical trade shows even. 
They, they really don't. But it's nice to find uh, if you can target a specific specialty. Like, you know, all the specialty doctors have their little organizations or conventions or what they have throughout the country. And, and a lot of times, Patrick, right in their, in your, in the, uh, the people that are on the call today, right in their backyard, uh, you know, there, I can't tell you how many that flow through here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And this would be like for convention for chiropractors or for podiatrists or pediatricians or, uh, you know, who knows all the specialties. And so you can find yeah, we these just, trade shows. We just had a, we had a licensee that just held one of these down in San Antonio. It was the Texas Medical Association. 1,700 doctors flowed through that over right. a, two, a two or three-day period. And uh, these things are very valuable ways to connect with doctors. Imagine having a booth, and by the way, we have a designed booth that we actually uh, loan to our licensees to, to use for these, so you don't have to go out and spend $5,000 on one like we did. Uh, and you basically set that up, and you just stand there and wait for people to walk by, and you engage with them. You hand them out some uh, literature, uh, some CDs that we have, uh, copies of my book, all kinds of ways to engage people at those things and, of course, gather their contact information. That's the key there. Here's one of our licensees uh, that actually used the, the booth there, as you can see. And uh, we, we, we loan that thing out uh, probably at least uh, two or three times a month because it's been – we actually have two of them. So uh, we're rotating those out there. Absolutely. So, folks, they I mean, they, 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 they do work, and it draws in the attention. And you'll, you'll notice there on the, the booth itself, it's – it's all branded with the same look and feel as you have on all your marketing pieces that Patrick showed earlier in the webinar. Yes, that's right. And, of course, there's no contact information or mention of ABS. Remember, guys, this is like a franchise, but you're not connecting to us. Like this licensee here, as you can see, their company name is Focus Revenue Solutions. We'll teach you in the classroom how to come up with your own name and logo. That is your company, and it's you promote it any way you want to. It's just nice to have us as, you know, the, the big network, the nationwide network that you tie into. Correct. Yeah. All right. All right, Bell so there's trip. another way to market. Let's, uh, let's talk about this because I know we've had a lot of people talk about, you know, can I use sales reps or how to, you know, I might be a little afraid to go out there and do some of this. Uh, so, uh, you know, th we talk about this in class and, how we can show you how to go out there and hire, find, hire, train, and get those sales reps out there. And I know, Patrick, one of your favorite stories that you know about is uh, little uh, Carla Lee Martinez out in Albuquerque, New Mexico. She's got yes. four sales reps that work for her and uh, is just knocking it down. I wish I had the picture of her standing there at the end of the training class, uh, Eric. Uh, you just said she's little... Uh, Carla Lee Martin. She really is small. <laughs> uh, she comes up to my shoulder, basically, and uh, and she's young. She's probably, I don't know, uh, when she came to training, she was 22, 23 years old, right. going to college, decided she didn't like college, didn't like working for somebody else. She used the money her parents gave her to start this business. And, man, I, we did a, an interview with her recently. In fact, if you guys have not been to our YouTube channel out there, uh, you just go to youtube.com slash whyabs, W-H-Y-A-B-S, and you'll see the interview that we did with uh, Carla Lee, and it, it is fascinating because this young lady has built this thing huge by utilizing sales reps, uh, and uh, she goes, uh, well, she takes a uh, vacation once a month. Yeah. She, she literally <laughs> takes a little mini vacations up to Vegas, I think, every you know month, uh, two or three days. Um, plus, she just got back from Hawaii, she says. So the point is, guys, if you don't have the time or the inclination uh, to do any marketing at all, we'll, we'll teach you how to do that through uh, sales reps. And there are people out there, believe it or not, uh, who love to sell. They love to go out and market, and we'll teach you how to find them and hire them and train them. And we have the training materials for those people that you can utilize to teach them all about our services. And uh, and then the great thing is that you don't have to pay them a thing, so, well until they get an account, <laughs> right. and then you pay them a commission, a portion of the setup fee, for example. Because when you set up a doctor, uh, folks, you may not realize this, but every company that's out there doing this is charging a setup fee, usually it's anywhere from a thousand to twenty five hundred dollars, and uh, depends on what you want to wrap into that for the doctor. 
Some people give away an iPad and other things, but that money is yours. Well, you share some of that with these uh, sales reps that have gotten the account for you. Then we'll also show you how you can give them a portion of the money that you're actually collecting from the doctor each month. Uh, so they have a little residual income that they build up. So we go through that training on marketing to sales reps in detail here in the live training as well here in uh, Dallas. And we show you exactly how to find those people and uh, train them and pay them and so forth. Okay, Eric, I wanted to get to this one because I, <laughs> I call this the secret sauce. Maybe you came up with that. I forget. That's great. But uh, this is the secret sauce that we have, guys. When you compare what we are doing for people that, that get into this business with other companies that are out there, you will be amazed when you see that we have uh, basically wrapped up the whole market with this, haven't we, Eric? This is yeah. – uh, something that Eric helped us develop, and in fact, he's involved in it uh, to some degree. So tell all about the secret sauce. Absolutely. Uh, this is where we here at ABS, as part of your, uh, your fee with us here in, uh, to become a licensee, uh, you get live demos with us, with your client. I explained this uh, earlier to someone uh, today, and this is really how we're, where we separate ourselves from everybody else that's out there. Uh, no other company that I know of does the in-depth demos as we do. And this is where, let's say that you became a licensee today and you don't know anything about medical billing, but yet you became a licensee today, you, you brought along, you say, hey, I've got a doctor who's already interested in, in utilizing my services. What do I do next? We want you to get them on a webinar. So imagine this. This will be you, your doctor, and us live on a go-to meeting, just like what we're doing on a go-to webinar, except it'll be now on a go-to meeting. Uh, we're all talking live. It's, it's privately held between you and your doctor and, and us, and we act as your support team. Uh, we, don't, we don't even come in as ABS. We act in as whatever your medical billing company name is. And so for then at that point, we take them on a tour of both iClaim and EMRX, and show them how the whole system works from, from the beginning to end. And this is where, again, where we separate ourselves and the, you, as a new billing company or as a, a longevity of any billing company, this is what differentiates you from everybody else out there. So what makes us different really, in turn, makes you different as a licensee out there in the field of gaining new clients because, again, this is where really where the rubber meets the road, and this is where we get to show the doctors uh, not just how good the software is. That's one thing. And so, you, Patrick, you know this about me. I love the software, but we're not in software sales. We are in revenue cycle sure. management and th that service, and that's what we point those doctors to. This is how we help you increase your revenue. Yeah, and we, we just had uh, one of the uh, members of our class this week ask, uh, you know, what, what if I'm asked a question that I don't know? Well, one of the instructors, Cynthia Anderson uh, from the Phoenix area, spoke up and said, well, it's very simple. You do what I did last week. Now, she's been with us for five years, folks, but she had a demo done last week uh, by uh, Eric himself, in fact. Uh, with Was there four doctors on that? I never asked Eric. Uh, four doctors. Show up or, there were yeah, four doctors. Four doctors. Huh? And so – the, the licensee is on there, uh, as you saw in this picture I just uh, had up there. Uh, see, that's you, let's say at the bottom, your spouse maybe, watching the de demo. Uh, we're, Eric is on the left there. That's not Eric, but uh, Eric's much better looking than that guy. But he is sitting there doing the demo, and the doctor is on his or her computer at their office uh, just watching and asking questions. And the great thing is that Eric answers all the questions. You as the licensee are just there, kind of like a fly on the wall, right, Eric? They don't, uh, they don't really have to engage at all. They don't have to engage, and even you know, as as, long, as much as really, you know, the Cynthia knows about being in the medical billing business. I mean, she just kind of sat back there quietly, and and then uh, engaged when she felt like she needed to engage, and and uh, it was great. It was. Uh, it, and what was the beauty about all of this is is that it was kind of funny that. You know, Patrick, we, we kind of like to know a little bit about the doctors prior to the demo. And so she kind of wrote this out, and I, I even forwarded you the email about, 
you know, these doctors are interested in just the billing portion alone. They're not even interested in the EMRX. You want to share with everybody on the call today what Cynthia calls you about afterwards? Yeah, uh, Cynthia calls me up and says, you're not going to believe what happened. She said, I just got a message from the doctors that were on that demo, and after seeing what Eric had shown them, uh, Eric, you just kind of went into the EMRX part just briefly there, didn't you? Just kind of showed them just a, a little part of that during the demo. They saw that part of it and decided that they now want her to include in the proposal what it would take for them to get involved in the EMRA, the electronic medical records, as well as have her do the billing for them. So she is just bouncing off the wall, Eric. She just couldn't <laughs> believe it because that will mean, of course, a whole lot more money every month for her as well. Sure. So. And, and I wanted to share that because that's a great success story because here, here is somebody that's been with us for five years or however long Cynthia has been with us, and yet – you know, through the demo, we were able to possibly help her even increase a, a brand new client. So, folks, it doesn't matter if you've been with us a long time or a very short period of time. This this is, Patrick, I think you named it pro properly. It, this, this is the secret sauce. Yeah, there, there is no other company in America, folks, that are doing this kind of thing for uh, their franchisees, or in our case, license fees. I don't know of any franchise that costs a million dollars that actually does the demonstrations for you. Now, one of the reasons we do that, Eric, is I think we've shared this on previous webinars, and some people may catch it and some don't. I can tell from some of the people that come to our classes here that they didn't quite catch the fact that the way we set our company up is not only do we make money on the licensing fee up front, licensing fee, of course. But folks, we actually make money on the transactions that go through our system. Our system can track, of course, all the claims that are being uh, filed by you uh, for that particular doctor, and we see the bottom line numbers. Well, we get a small portion of that rebated from our clearinghouse partners. You don't pay this to us now. Our partners, our technology partners, pay that to us. So we make money. Well, of course we want you to sign up as many clients as you possibly can and file as many claims as you can because we're making money on that too. And I think that Eric, makes sense to, to, to a lot of people uh, of the, really the reasons why we do what we do. Uh, I'm glad yeah. you're bringing up things that won't, don't work. So let's go there, Patrick. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's kind of avoid the pitfalls that we've already hit. <laughs> yeah, I mean this, this webinar is about methods that work, but folks – let me just say this. Uh, there are other companies uh, out there, of course, who do something similar to what we do. We only know of a two or three that are really doing anything close to what we do. One of them is a company that actually uh, has a server-based software. It's not cloud-based. It's server-based. Uh, but by putting a piece of the software on the doctor's computer and one on yours and then using a third-party software, you can kind of connect. So they're, they're telling people that you can be online. Well, you can, but it's not web-based. It's not cloud-based. And the reason I say all that is because the, the person who started that company has actually written a book on how to start your own medical billing business. It's called Claim Success. And Kyle Farhat is the fellow who wrote the book. You can find this on Amazon. These are some of the things that he says in this book. I've taken this right out. I mean, they're quotes right out of the book. He says, for example, to create a fax campaign. Now, folks, uh, that may have worked 20 years ago when uh, you know he started his company. But in today's world, faxing will get you uh, nowhere. It, it, it really uh, it makes people mad, for one thing, to get a fax that they didn't ask for. And secondly, it can get you in a lot of trouble. You, you, can, be, uh, you can be sued by any business who gets a fax that they – had not authorized you to send that fax to them. So if you do what Mr. Farhat says here in his book, you, you, could, be, you could be in deep trouble. They, they, charge, they, they fine you $500 for every uh, fax that you send out that uh, you know, wasn't authorized. And if, it's, uh, if you knew that you shouldn't be sending the faxes out, uh, it's triple damages. So $1,500 per fax. Uh, so it, it, it can bankrupt you. So I'm bringing this up because, folks, again, there are people who are teaching things out there in today's world that just don't work in, in this century. Uh, he says advertise in the Yellow Pages. Eric, I, I don't even know anybody who uses the Yellow Pages unless it's on the <laughs> Internet, right? <laughs> well, that kind of reminds me of the, of the gentleman up, I, I think, out of Oklahoma who used to sell Yellow Pages but got into the medical billing business because, the yellow pages are going out. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I get one every once in a while, but, uh, you know, I throw them in the recycle bin because uh, I, I just use the Internet to find things nowadays. But here's the point. Doctors don't just all of a sudden, if they're thinking about outsourcing their billing, yell over to Mary, Mary, why don't you get on uh, yellowpages.com and find us a medical billing company? That's just not how they locate no. somebody to do their billing. They want to do business with somebody who has put themselves in the place of the expert who's educated them and who's put their name at the top of their mind using some of the automated marketing that we teach. All right, another thing he says to do is to seek out local and community print advertising opportunities. Now, I don't know what he's talking about unless it's just a little local paper, you know, for your community uh, or I don't know, Penny Savers magazines that come out. The, the little coffee shops all have those little newsletters, you know, that you can advertise in. Folks, again, doctors don't find their medical billers in newspaper ads. They will ask their office manager to contact maybe some other doctors that they know that are outsourcing their billing. So it's, it's through referrals usually. So, again, here's a third way that he says to market that should never, ever be. You don't spend your time and money doing that. And then the last thing I wanted to show right out of the book was this. Go big with a billboard. <laughs> That's a little go. costly, wouldn't you think? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't even imagine. They're probably $1,500 a month, I would think, to rent a billboard. And then, again, do doctors drive down the freeway and see some sign that says something about, uh, you know, that we do medical billing. And he jots down, you know, oh, let me stop the car and jot down that uh, web address and go find out. You know, that's just not how it's done, folks. This is old-fashioned marketing, uh, just like the software that he markets is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's old-fashioned. You have to follow people who are actually doing it. Now, we as a company are not out there actively marketing every day uh, because we're not in the medical billing business per se. We, we train and teach other people how to do it. But we get plenty of feedback from our Latin Vs, don't we, Eric, about what works and what doesn't work. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, and these are the ones that uh, we certainly would want to stay away from. And, and, and we even kind of go into even further detail about some of the things that methods that you just don't want to get into. And, and you know, Patrick, let's, let's go kind of go back to what you mentioned earlier in the webinar. Stick with the ones that you know that you feel most comfortable with. The ones that you don't feel comfortable yeah. with, don't, don't go down that path. Cause you, That's right. You, you, it's a little shaky ground, so stay on the ones that you know that you can you feel very comfortable with, and we'll help you. Uh, but if there's one that I would say do, do the demos. <laughs> do, oh get, yeah, now get your doctors to the demos. That's right. Now this has just been uh, today, of course, in this little short period of time that we've got. What time is it? Uh, uh, we've got it's got about seven, seven minutes. minutes. Yep, we got about seven minutes left. All right, so why don't you be looking and seeing if there's any other uh, marketing-type questions uh, there that the people put in, and we'll address those first. But sure. let me just say this, folks. This is just a preview. We can't possibly cover what we cover in five days here in Dallas. So, uh, again, we're just kind of giving you a little preview. And if you're wondering about, uh, you know, what types of doctors that you should be marketing to, I'll go ahead and give those to you. We recommend that people go out and the top specialties – for the new billing companies that are just brand new in this business, you should probably first start with some of the general family practices that are out there. Uh, those are wide open to, uh, and they do a lot of volume, of course. Uh, then ENTs, we found licensees love the ENTs because ear, nose, and throat doctors have uh, lots of uh, visits and lots of claims to process as well. Pain management is another big market that you should uh, think about going after. Uh, and then, of course, podiatry. Uh, now. Folks, we, well, there's one over here I'm going to put up on the screen before I say this, internal medicine. Uh, we will show you how to find companies that can give you the exact information you need to contact these doctors in these specialties, uh, mailing house companies. And we can even show you how on the Internet you can find a lot of this just using Google. Uh, to find the contact information for these. But uh, there's there's five that, that uh, probably are our top five that you would start it, start off with, and uh, and then we'll show you from there where to go from there, of course. But, guys, these are not the only five. Now, remember, any doctor who's filing claims to an insurance company uh, and, and through Medicare is using a standard form called the 1500 form. That's just a standard form form that the government came up with. And uh, there are, what would you say, Eric? I don't know, th four dozen, five dozen? There's probably 50 or 60 different specialties out there, aren't there? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. E even specialties of specialties. So right. uh, there's, 
there's there's a lot of a lot of, lot of different types of specialties out there. Yeah, but since this is on marketing, we thought, well, this would be a, a good thing to share here on uh, this webinar is where, where would you get started if you were a brand new medical biller? And so we'll tell you why we've chosen those uh, when you come to the live uh, training here. Eric, do you see any more questions there from uh, anybody about marketing specifically? Or uh, Let's see. Not necessarily about, about specifically about marketing, except maybe here from James. Uh, do we have uh, an analysis template for each of the nine separate available ABS services? You want to talk about what the the practice analysis is? Very oh yeah, James. Form. We actually that that practice analysis that I showed you that's uh, it's two pages. It's about thirty questions. That covers everything. The questions we ask on there will tell you whether or not they have a need for some of the other services that we have. Uh, besides medical billing. As you know, folks, we if you've looked at our website, you know that we have several services that will open the doors and get you in to talk to doctors and office managers. And uh, many of those, of course, are wrapped into that proposal that you'll be taking back to the doctor. So uh, there's not a separate one for each one, uh, James, but they, they cover it all. Yeah. All right. Uh, I also wanted just to mention today that some people say, well, should I go and speak with my own doctor? Well, folks, yes, there, there are doctors out there, even your own doctor, who might not even be using electronic medical records. And if they haven't gotten involved in it, ours is certified for meaningful use. Eric, you want to talk to them about what that means? Sure. Meaningful use is the adoption of an electronic medical records platform. And uh, they, they get this directly from the from the government, and they have to meet some certain requirements. And we here at uh, ABS, our EMRX, which is our electronic medical records platform, meets all the requirements for those doctors to get that incentive money. So because it has to use a web-based system, uh, basically, because it's it's all electronic, and it has to go go out there and, and be uh, to collect, you know, patient records, and then to keep up with all this, this gives that doctor the opportunity to, and the security, because I think we, you know, a lot of people ask about the security of online uh, processing of claims and the electronic medical records. This all has to meet all the requirements. So when we say that uh, the doctors get the the thirty-nine thousand dollars of incentive for the adoption of an EMR. That EMR has to fit with all what's called the HIPAA rules and compliances, and ours fits every single part of that. So you will be able to provide that doctor an opportunity to gain more money just outside of collecting uh, more money for them by processing their claim. And ours, ours like Eric says, is, uh, is it, it has to be cloud-based to be able to fit all these rules and regulations and interact with other systems that are out there because that's part of what electronic medical records is all about, sharing the data with other doctors and hospitals and things. Ours is so secure, folks, that it can be actually viewed by the doctor on a cell phone, a smartphone of any kind. They can actually see their schedule like you see here in this picture. Uh, and, uh, of course, they'll be able to... Uh, see the claims, the status of their claims, the status of the money, 24-7 from anywhere in the world. It's the most high-tech technology that's out there. So, uh, Eric, as we wrap up here, uh, before I tell him a little bit more about that next thing that's coming up, uh, I did see one there from James that he was asking questions about how do we maintain and, and ensure the integrity and security uh, of all of this. Uh, James, uh, basically, uh, we just kind of addressed some of it there uh, because it is cloud-based. It's up to us and our technology partners to make sure that that's HIPAA compliant and fits all the rules and regulations for security. Just like you would uh, trust maybe doing online banking, uh, ours follows all the same rules and is just as secure as you know that type of uh, technology. Plus, it's all backed up and maintained uh, in two different locations in the United States on two different servers. Uh, redundantly, meaning that if one went down, the other one would just kick in, and it, you'd never know. That's it. Yeah. Well, uh, Patrick. No other questions there about marketing. I don't guess. I didn't see anything uh, okay. else really about marketing. Um, well, so we really appreciate uh, you know the the questions that did come in. So thank you so much for those that participated yeah. in that. Um, let me just mention this, since we are talking about our training this week that's being held here in Dallas. Uh, we do have ongoing training and education uh, and motivation 
for our licensees. Here's some of the webinars that we've held so far here in 2013. Uh, we've done these on the dates you see there, and we have some actually coming up here next week, starting next week, a series of five different uh, weeks of uh, learning webinars. And then throughout the year, we have all the subjects that you see here. So I'm just going to kind of put this up here so you kind of can glance at them and see what you'll be missing if you don't get down here to the next training. Here's another screen. Uh, with uh, some more topics that we're going to be covering, and here's the third screen with some more topics. So anyway, I just thought I'd throw those up there. You guys who uh, watch this recording can go back and read those if I went by too fast. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at AB Systems, and of course you can all go, go, go to our blog and, and keep up with us there at absystems.com/blog.